it's really important to use the material that you practice in as many ways as possible. That way, when you're practicing, you're spending more time working on making music than instead of practicing technique and running up and down scales and arpeggios. To help you get started thinking like this, uh, in this video I'm going to go over five different places where you can use a major 7 arpeggio and I'm going to give you some examples of lines that you can make for each of those chords. To keep it simple, I'm going to use this C major 7 arpeggio on all the examples. And of course if you want to see that in the context of a position that would be something like this. And the first example sounds like this. first example I'm using the C major 7 over an A minor 7 chord. So that means that I'm using the arpeggio from the third of the A minor 7. And using the arpeggio from the third of a chord is something that's really common in jazz. It's a very nice way to get sort of a different arpeggio that has an extra extension but also still really connected to the chord that's already there. So the A minor 7 is of course a 2 in a 2 five, one so A minor, D7, G major 7 in this example. And uh, the line starts off with the C major 7 arpeggio, so C major 7 arpeggio, and then down the A minor pentatonic scale, and then I'm going chromatically up to the third of D7, so E, F to F sharp, and then on the F7 I'm playing first just the triad from the third, so again we're using the third, and then a bit of chromaticism, and then just down the scale, resolving to the third of G major 7. The second example is using the C major 7 arpeggio to convey a sort of an Lydian sound on an F major 7 chord. So what we have here is just a short 2-5 in uh, F and uh, the line there is just using actually B flat major 7 arpeggio on the G minor and then the C7 line is just two chord tones and then chromatically up to the third of the F major 7. And then I'm first going down again actually an A minor pentatonic scale and then into the C major 7 arpeggio and I'm really sort of the Lydian sound is of course the sharp 11 over the F major 7 that's really the, sort of the note and the sound we want to bring out in this case and uh, that's of course the seventh of the C major 7 arpeggio so that makes sort of a nice ending note up here where I add the chord under it In this example I'm using the C major 7 over an F sharp half diminished or F sharp uh, minor 7 flat 5 chord. So the F sharp is of course uh, part of a cadence to E minor, so it's F sharp half diminished to B7 to E minor. And uh, we are using the C major 7 arpeggio from the flat 5. So um, if we look at that against the, C, the F sharp then it's going to give us uh, the flat 5, the 7th, the flat 9, which is not the strongest note, but it's in the middle of the arpeggio, and then the 11th. So all really strong notes for the minor 7 flat 5 sound. And uh, the line really just starts with the C major 7 arpeggio again. So uh, first the leading note, and then up the arpeggio, and then sort of down the scale, or down an A minor uh, pentatonic scale again. And then on the B7, I start off with a, a diminished arpeggio, descending and then a small trill on the third up to the sharp 9 and then resolving that to the 5th of E minor The fourth place where you can put a C major 7 arpeggio to good use is if you're using it from the flat 7 of dominant so uh, the C major 7 is of course going to be on the flat 7 of a D7 and uh, in the example I'm using a D7 as a tritone substitute in a 2 5 one in the key of uh, D flat major. So that means that I'm playing E flat minor 7, D7 to D flat major 7. Just to have sort of a bit of a different uh, context than all the G major and E minor that I've used until now. Uh, so the line is really simple because uh, I'm just starting off with this line that's kind of built on an a G flat major 7 arpeggio on the E flat and then on the C7 I'm just running up using a lead note and then running up the C major 7 arpeggio and 
than just making the small scale fragment and then resolving that to the A flat, so the fifth of the D flat major seven. In this last example, I'm using the major seven arpeggio from the flat nine of a dominant. So that means that I'm using it over a B7 in this example. Uh, that's a sound that's coming out of harmonic minor because that's the only place where you really have like a dominant next to a major seven uh, arpeggio like this. And um, the progression I'm using on is of course just a two five one in the key of E major. So that's F sharp minor and then a B7 and then an E major seven chord. And the line that uh, I made is uh, basically the F sharp minor line is coming out of um, like A major seven arpeggio with a few extra scale notes. So so that's all coming out of this basic shape. So that's really the same as the first example because that's the major seven that's found on the third. Then I'm going up and on the B seven, I start off with just playing the C major seven arpeggio. And then I move from there into this uh, A diminished triad. And then I can nicely resolve that to the third of E major seven. This way of applying and using the things that you study in many different places is a much more efficient way to work, I think. You get much more out of your arpeggios and your chord voicings and your pentatonic scales and all those things if you're able to use them on different chord sounds. And uh, it also means that you're going to spend more time just figuring out how to play well over those chord sounds and a little bit less time working on practicing technique and getting scales into your fingers. And this also gives a little bit of a hint why I'm not a huge fan of modes and practicing different modes, but just suggest that you will learn the major scale and then learn how to play over all the chords that are in there. If this is the first time you see one of my lessons, then feel free to subscribe. I publish a new lesson every Thursday. Uh, and uh, there are also weekly Q&As and vlogs and backing tracks happening on my channel. So there's a lot of stuff if you want to try and expand more of your vocabulary in playing jazz guitar and explore new ideas. If you uh, want to download a PDF of the examples that I went over in uh, this lesson, you can go to my website and uh, you can find an article that's accompanying this lesson and there's a PDF download. And of course when you're there you can also subscribe to my newsletter uh, if you want to stay up to date with the stuff that's happening. and. Uh, also, uh, you can check out my Patreon page if you want to help me keep making these lessons. If you have any questions or suggestions for topics or ideas for things I could do video videos on, then uh, let me know, leave a comment, or connect with me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, uh, Instagram. Uh, and it's nice to get feedback from you guys. It's nice to hear what you want to see uh, videos on, or if, something, if there's something you found good, or something you think I should do differently or do more on. So um, I hope to hear from you there. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and uh, on to next week.